Hello again you guys, welcome back to the channel, and today we have another Run vs. Run segment. This week we'll be focusing on Brian Michael Bendis' Ultimate Spider-Man run, going all the way from the very first issue uh, with Peter Parker, all the way up until his uh, finale with Miles in the main Marvel Universe. And he will be facing off against Dan Slott, all the way from Brand New Day leading up to the first issue of the Nick Spencer run. Now as y'all know I don't typically like to talk about which one is better and why. I will give you my opinion on which I think is better and why, but that's not really what these are about. Uh, with that in mind I also thought about comparing Dan Slott's to Nick Spencer's run but at the moment, Nick Spencer just really doesn't have a lot out to judge it fairly, in my opinion. Uh, Dan Slott, you know, has like years worth of Spider-Man writing under his belt, and Nick Spencer is still pretty early into his run. So uh, I thought about covering that, but decided to save something like that for a later date. Uh, for now, though, it is Brian Michael Bendis with Ultimate Spider-Man against Dan Slott on Amazing Spider-Man. Now, we'll start with the Ultimate Spider-Man run, because that's technically been going on longer. Um, Bendis himself was also the only one who wrote it, except for, I believe, the very first issue, which I believe he co-wrote. He wrote it literally all the way from the first issue where this new alternate version of Peter Parker gets bitten by the spider all the way up until uh, the passing of Peter, the introduction of Miles, and then the establishment of Miles in the main Marvel Universe. Uh, Bendis left after years at Marvel to go work at DC, and that's when his Spider-Man run officially concluded, but he has technically been on Ultimate Spider-Man since the very start of it. Now, Dan Slott came in on his run following uh, Civil War after J. Michael Straczynski left. Uh, Slott actually co-wrote the Spider-Man book with a couple other authors. They kind of like traded off going back and forth there for a while, or co-writing, or this, that, the other. Um, and then towards the end of that, he really uh, was one of the sole people in control of the book. And then from like Superior Spider-Man onward, especially, it was all Dan Slott. Now, starting with some of the weaknesses first, um, I do feel as though Dan Slott had a lot of good ideas and a lot of poor execution. Now, I'm not sure how much of this was him or how much of it was like Marvel behind the scenes, but like Superior Spider-Man, in my opinion, is a great idea, but I do think the series went on for a little too long. And then I thought Spider-Verse was a really good idea, and then I felt like the ending lacked everything that it needed to really make it a great story. And I thought Peter having his own uh, company with the all-new costume and like the poor man's Tony Stark stuff, again, I thought it was all a really good idea. I just felt like something was missing. And don't get me wrong, there are definitely a lot of highlights uh, and I guess higher points in Dan Slott's run. I just felt like generally he tended to be a bit more of an idea guy and then kind of fell flat a little on the execution portion of it. With Bendis, he did have the added advantage of telling him like all new Spider-Man story, which allowed him to pull a lot from the source material and kind of like redo it or reinvent it or update it or however, whatever you want to say. But I felt like that also kind of hurt him. While he did do a lot of his own unique stuff, he also kind of could have done better in certain spots I found. Um, 
Especially in regards to Peter, you know, Bendis tried his hand at the Clone Saga and it just didn't really work much like the original did. But then again, Dan Slott tried his hand at the Clone Saga and again, it just really didn't work. For whatever reason, no one can tell a good Clone Saga story, no matter how much, like, cool characters might have come from it, at least in my opinion. So yeah, while I do think Bendis kind of played it smart in mirroring a lot of classic Spider-Man stories, I feel like certain things within the realm of Peter especially could have been improved on. Now fortunately for Bendis, he did not at all have that problem with Miles. He could put Miles through the exact same situations and just just to see how a character like this would react, uh, or he could, you know, put him through entirely new ones as well, and Bendis kind of did a pretty good amount of both, and I really think that did a lot of good for Miles' character as a whole. And before we get to the strengths of both authors, I do think it's notable how each of them kind of tackled a lot of the same stories in their own way. Like, both of them did kill off a version of Peter Parker, and both of them brought him back, both of them replaced Peter Parker with a different Spider-Man, uh, with Dan Slott using Dr. Octopus, and Bendis obviously using Miles. And so, while I think it's entirely up to opinion as to who did what better, in that regard, I do still think it's interesting to see that some of them tackle a lot of the same stories all around the same time frame as well. Now, to get into strengths, uh, to start with Bendis, I really feel like he does a good job of capturing like character voices, especially for a younger, uh, or a group of younger characters. Everyone felt relatable. No one felt too cheesy, and Bendis has been praised for his voices in the past, but often like criticized for her being like too talky, having like too many speech bubbles. I really found that he had a great balance throughout all of his Spider-Man books. And again, just great character voices, a lot of good stuff, uh, just all around. Um, and you really get the sense that he had a passion for both Peter and then eventually uh, when you transition into Miles you could tell that that passion had definitely just transitioned. Uh, in my opinion, uh, the way Bendis killed Peter Parker is one of the best uh, like Spider-Man deaths in comics like ever. I just think it was so well done, so well written, and uh, it, it was just a great end to Peter as a character, and I was actually a little upset when they brought him back later in the Ultimate series just because it was such a good death, but they still kind of made it work. They uh, didn't like keep Peter around, and so it didn't really feel like he was forced in, but it was still just really cool to see him interact with uh, Miles and all that as well. I feel like Bendis also did a great job of maintaining character balance, making both Spider-Man characters feel as though they belonged in the universe. Uh, thankfully, the Ultimate Spider-Man series was never really too bogged down by other events. There are a few notable cases uh, within the Spider-Man books where it definitely like tied in with whatever else was going on in the larger scale of the Ultimate Marvel Universe. But for the most part, it really felt as though Bendis was telling his own story. Now, as far as Slot's strengths, I really feel like he understands the Spider-Man character, especially in his early works. If you look at something like uh, Fantastic Spider-Man or Spider Island, for example, those are arguably some of the best modern Spider-Man stories, uh, period. I will say that after that, I kind of felt as though Slot began writing himself in circles, but especially in the early days, it's very apparent that he just truly has an equal passion for Spider-Man. He really got a feel for Peter's voice. Even the other characters all like felt as though they really belonged. Uh, Brand New Day is a little different because not many people were fans of Brand New Day, 
it was like super confusing and it made a lot of like really weird changes to Spider-Man overall. But again, that's definitely not Dan Slott's fault, that's just the direction Marvel as a company wanted to take the character. And once they kind of got past all the brand new day stuff, it really picked up again. I also kind of want to note that Slot also did a lot for Spider-Man's villains in terms of character development. Um, even going beyond someone like Otto Octavius, you know, he kind of, like, if you look at someone like a Boomerang or the Osborne family, um, he, he definitely had a lot of, like, intriguing notes for e even some of, like, the major villains throughout the series. And I would say that one of the best moments in his entire run is near the end of Superior Spider-Man when Peter comes back and... Uh, Norman Osborn's Green Goblin does his villain monologue to Spider-Man believing it to be Otto Octavius and Spider-Man just cracks a joke and Goblin just instantly knows that it's Peter again. I thought that entire scene was very well written and just like one of the truly spectacular moments throughout his run. I also feel as though it's worth noting that mm -hmm. Bendis tried to tackle a lot of like some more mature themes throughout Ultimate Spider-Man. Uh, like, he definitely had a lot of, like, social issues uh, go through, and, like, uh, he kind of explored gender roles, race issues, uh, and so on, which I think really, like, added to the book as a whole. Not to say that Slot never did that, but he generally kept the book a little bit more fun and lighthearted and action-packed and so I know some people don't like seeing any like real-world themes or issues in their comics uh, but I know some people also really like that I'm one of those who happens to like it and so Bendis scores some brownie points with me in that regard now as far as my personal opinion as to which one is better I would say Ultimate Spider-Man I think it was just superbly written, and as upset as I was when Peter initially died, I ended up totally falling in love with Miles uh, just as much as this uh, newer, younger version of Peter. I liked the changes Bendis made to other characters for the most part. Uh, obviously his run is not without its weak points, but I think there's just so many like highs throughout this run that it truly deserves the, the recognition that it, people often praise it for. Uh, both his Peter and Miles Morales stories uh, throughout the years, throughout the run, like there, there's a reason it's such a popular run and it's because it is just fantastic. And that's not to say that Dan Slott is a terrible writer or anything. Um, I know a lot of people definitely do have a lot of strong feelings about Dan Slott. I in no way think his Spider-Man run is, like, terrible. Uh, again, it has its highs and its lows, but like I said earlier, he kind of seems to be more of an idea guy rather than an execution type. But again, both authors have done a lot of good and bad for the character over the years. And perhaps when a little bit more comes out, I will do a uh, run versus run on Bendis' Iron Man versus Slot's Iron Man. But that is everything we have for the time being. Thank you guys so much for watching. Feel free to let me know which one you prefer down in the comment section below. And I will see you guys again real soon.